particular CS change the technology landscape and change the technology landscape that we know. Now, for all of you that have been watching the mobile industry for some time, it's perfectly obvious to now, perfect, perfectly obvious to you now, that there's a mobile computing revolution underway. That your most personal computing device used to be a personal computer, but now it's a mobile device in your hands. It's perfectly obvious to you now. But the magnitude of this change is still being internalized by all of us. I'd like to spend some time talking about that. This particular CES to me is probably as important and as significant as 1995. The context of 1995. When all of you, or many of you, as I saw in the audience, were also at that particular context, recognized that the world was going to be different. You recognize that the world is going to be different because of the announcement of Windows 95. From that point forward, the personal computer was no longer an office automation device, but it's now a personal computer that we can use in our daily lives. Because of DirectX, the PC transformed itself into a multimedia machine. It was no longer just used for spreadsheets and word processing. You can now use it for videos and playing games, listening to music, storing photographs, all kinds of wonderful things that are part of our lives. Now what happened in 1995 seems to happen about every 10 years. Every 10 years or so, processor technology gets better, networking technology gets faster, we get more memory in the system, display technology gets richer, and software technology evolves. And all of a sudden, bam! Something magical happens in the computer industry. 1995 was the year that I remember where the PC became absolutely the most important device in our lives. About 10 years later or so, in the late 90s and early 2000s, new companies showed up. Networking technology became fast enough that our PCs no longer had to sit by itself. We can connect our PC over to the internet to other PCs, to other people, and to services all over the place. And as a result, new companies were created. Yahoo, Google, eBay, Amazon, and started the internet revolution and made the PC even more useful to us. And to its credit, and to its credit, in the year 2009-2010, Apple Computer introduced the iPhone and then recently the iPad. These two devices, yet again, combined the evolution of great technology to the point where it revolutionized the way we use computers, the way we build computers, the way we enjoy computers. There is no question at this point there is a computing revolution happening. And with each one of these generations, each one of these eras of computing, the number of users in the world expands. It was hundreds of millions, it seems. And during the standalone PC day, the consumer PC, multimedia PC days, where people bought sure grab software. Do you remember sure grab software? And then it became hundreds of millions of people, maybe about a billion people, that were connected on the internet and joined the internet together. Going forward, I think we all believe we're going to have more than one of these mobile computing devices in our lives. And the number of these devices will expand well into the tens of billions in what people are starting to call the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things. Well, in order to have an Internet of Things, you need to have computers and everything. You need to have browsers and everything. You need to have operating systems and everything. And these things will be everywhere, from kiosks to cars to phones and tablets. So this is the beginning of a new era. The beginning of a new era that's really, really important. And I think that we're going to look back on 2011 and this particular CES at that turning point where it became crystal clear to every single one of us that the world has changed. That the people who, the companies of the past that were leaders are readjusting their strategies. 
and new companies are going to emerge and positions are going to change. Now, as we look at, look at um, this particular revolution and think about the concept, it seems to make a lot of sense. You see more and more iPhones everywhere. You see more and more Android devices everywhere. It seems to make perfect sense. But looking at the numbers, it's completely staggering. Why is it, why is it that this computer revolution, this new computing revolution, happened so quickly? And why am I talking about it here? It's perfectly obvious to you in the audience because you're experiencing it in real time. And why is it companies all over the world are still adapting? And the reason for that is because it happened so quickly. If you take a look at the personal computer revolution, the PC revolution, it took some nearly 10 years from the introduction to the P of the PC to the time that there were, we were selling about 30 or 40 million units a year, or cumulative shipments of 30 or 40 million units. In the case of these mobile devices, what people call smartphones, it's taken literally only two or three years for us to have shipped over 100 million units. The rate of growth is really staggering. I mean, if you were to look at this chart and extrapolate it in some kind of a meaningful way, there are no companies in the world that can adapt to this change, no matter who you are. Because technology simply takes longer to develop than that. And so here we are, as an industry, responding to a revolution that was started by a visionary company. This particular CES, you're going to see the pieces coming in. This particular CES, you're going to see the pieces coming in. And as we see it come together, you're going to see the, the landscape change. And the landscape is changing in quite dramatic ways, actually. I mean, if you think about this, your most personal computer, your most personal computer changed from a PC to a mobile device. The person who makes that mobile computer, the OEM, the company that makes that mobile computer, used to be a computer company, used to be a PC company. But you're now buying these mobile computers from carriers. So the person who builds it and the person you buy it from are different. You used to buy it from an electronic retail store or you buy it online. Now you're buying at a carrier. So everything from the way you use it, what you use it for, the company that builds it, where you buy it, how you enjoy the software and buy it, has now completely changed. The company on that stack, from the OEM all the way to the architecture, has completely changed. Whereas the old PC used to have an architecture of x86 with discrete CPUs, now this new architecture is ARM and SOC, system on chip. Everything has fundamentally changed. Now, you know, for many of us in, in the technology industry, investing in the future and building on a dream is something that we love doing. And that's something that we kicked off here at NVIDIA some five years ago, chasing this new computer industry, if you will, trying to make a contribution to this new computer industry so that we can touch the lives of a lot more people. And we created a processor architecture we call Tegra. Now this particular processor, um, when I started this project about five years ago, I gave the team a really wonderful mission. Hey look, I need you guys to design a processor that is 100 times, 50 to 100 times more energy efficient than the PC, because we need it to fit your pocket. We need this device to be able to perform all of the types of functionality that you would imagine a mobile device, a computer that you take with you to do. You take a computer with you to enjoy content. You're not computing, you're not developing spreadsheets, you're not writing C-sharp applications. You're reading books, you're enjoying magazines, you're watching movies, you're streaming websites, you're playing games. So this particular device has to do all of those things. And it has to be tiny so that it can fit in your pocket. And so Tegra 2 is 50 times more efficient, energy efficient than a typical PC. It's less than the size of a dime, and it can leak 12 billion. <laughs> and I'm just really, really excited about Tegra 2. The engineers have done a fabulous job. Now there's a few 
distinguishing characteristics of Tegra 2 that we've really focused on. We believe that multitasking is going to be an important characteristic of how you use mobile device. Because you're going to be listening to music or um, you're going to be uh, uh, still connected to the web while you're enjoying your book or playing a game. You could be chatting to somebody while you're playing a game. So the ability to multitask is really important. The second thing is we believe that this mobile device is going to become a computer first and a phone second. Whereas 